after that, we have the register options. So if you look, options string dot new, right? Ports. So you ever do that where it says, you know, use this exploit, you know, set um, our host set, you know, L port set, blah, 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 blah. So it's an option string, and he's declaring all the new ones. Ports, right? And then here's the data that it prints out for how they, how they work. One of the options that you can set is timeout. One of the options that you can set is concurrency. One of the options that you can set is delay, or jitter, right? Now, it can also take our port. And then he has a function called run host. Run host will run on the IP that you pass to it. So you see timeout equals data store timeout. You declared timeout earlier, right? Ports, Ruby regular expressions, socket, port spec. And then the data store works against the ports you declared earlier. Now look what he says. Hey man, if ports is empty, Raise an error message. And then here's right here, MSF option validate error dot new. Then he'll throw ports. Yo, man, you didn't declare your ports. Jitter value, right? Jitter value isn't required. So that's why there's no if check like that. Delay value, right? If delay is less than zero, raise an error. Hey, man, you can't give delay a negative number. Okay. All right. While ports is greater than zero, he builds these two hashes ready to take in data. So one up to the number of concurrency, how much you want to do. Do this port equals port shift. Break if not this number you gave me. And then pump all this data into T. And then he'll go this port do begin. Right, and then it adds this stuff. So add the delay, right? Perform the scan, s dot connect, connect to the port you specified, connect to the R host you specified with this connection timeout. Right? If the port status, check out that placeholder. See it? For the IP, and then another placeholder for the port. See it? Okay, if I get something, right, if these have a value, then print it's open. If they don't, then print what? It's closed, right? If there's any connection errors, rescue and raise errors for me. Okay, that's what the E is for. Okay, so... The reason that I think it's important to learn a little bit of Ruby is not so much so that you can turn around and be a Ruby programmer, but you don't want Ruby code to be so confusing to you. 